Thank you so much for joining us for Queering Education. We are super excited to have you here today for your queer. You graduated. Now what? Uh, Quinn Huang from the University of Texas will be talking to us about what your options are. So welcome. Thank you so much for being here today. Hi, thank you so much. Um, yeah, I, good morning or good afternoon, depending on when you're watching this. Um, and yeah, I'll be talking a little bit about um, clearing your education and what are some options um, and whatnot. Let's see. So I'm just trying to get this thing open. Zoom is just a very interesting thing. Um, my pronouns are they, them, and I'm one of the assistant directors at the Austin, uh, at the UT Austin at Gender and Sexuality Center. I have this wonderful presentation for us. Uh, so if you ever want to feel free to contact me, just let me know. Here is my email. So feel free to reach out to me at any point. If you want my Twitter handle or whatnot, um, you could always ask that in my email, so that's totally cool. Um, all right, so as we are going through this presentation, know that there are certain goals and objectives that we'll be talking about. Um, so the four main goals and objectives that we'll be overseeing right now is um, questions to think about, what are some possibilities to think about, and what are some awesome, useful resources that, that you could stay connected with, and then how can you stay connected with people across um, the nation, locally, statewide, and so forth. And if you hear my dog barking in the background, I'm so sorry, just in advance. He just likes to get my attention and he might make an appearance. Who knows? Um, but he's very cute and he looks like a puppy every now and again. Um, anyway, so you're probably thinking, well, what questions should you be thinking about? Here are some of those questions, right? Um, so if you've never heard of the Campus Pride Index, it is a nationwide uh, listing of LGBTQI colleges uh, and universities. There's also trade schools on here too. So as you can see on this website, or at least this link or this infographic, whatever you would like to call it, um, it, it is, this is what it will look like. It has a number of listings of different universities across the nation. And as you can see on here, it will have uh, campus search, campus college prep, um, FAQs, and so on and so forth. If you do get to go on this website, um, I have this wonderful link to the infographic. It's really cool. Um, you can check out like, um, what schools you might be interested in. Maybe if you want to search regionally, what schools are also in that area that you are interested in going to and other information. So you, if you, to read it, also you want to look at the index scores, right? To kind of understand how they compare with other institutions. The scale that they rank or they use is a five out of five star rating scale. Um, and so they have other information here that's very quick and easy to use such as uh, in-state tuition, out-of-state tuition, population size, um, what type of, um, where if it's regionally, and so on and so forth. Um, it will also even talk about what type of programs they have as well. And so this is a great way to know what are institutions doing, what are some of the options that are available, especially if you're looking into residential life, safety, um, as well as maybe other resources such as academic. So this is a fun way to kind of get to know your school or the schools that you're interested really quickly. Um, and also comparing them with other institutions as well. Um, so yeah, and then another thing that we're also going to take a look at once when I get this thing into PowerPoint mode, um, I was trying to be really tech savvy and whatnot. Um, yeah, so like I mentioned, this Campus Pride Index uh, can help you narrow your search as well as also look for um, uh, non-traditional uh, options and trade schools too. So just be aware that um, uh, this is not a presentation that focuses mainly on four-year institutions. If you're interested in other opportunities as well, go for it. It's almost like oh, an, an, this presentation is focused on mainly on like an RPG type of uh, game, right? You build your own path, you build your own uh, narrative and your roles and where you would like to go after you finish high school. So that's really what this is focused on. Um, and so know that if you are looking at institutions, there are some things that you might be wanting to think about. If you're a first generation college student like I am and was, um, I didn't know a lot of things uh, when I was looking into uh, going into post-secondary 
education. Um, and post-secondary education could also mean higher education, college, and universities as well. And so some of the things that I wish I had known or looked into was what are some ally trainings that they have, right? Um, at UT Austin um, and Texas State, they have ally trainings that they offer to students, staff, and faculty. And I say Texas State just because I used to be an alum there. Um, and so that is uh, something that I never knew about when I was an undergrad, at least my undergrad, we didn't have an ally training up until like I was about to leave. So it was kind of like, oh, interesting, right? Um, so had I looked into that, I could also learn if my staff and faculty um, have learned about LGBT identities. Um, also, do they know what resources are available, right? So some trainings offer what resources, um, what information to look for, and so on and so forth. Uh, other things is also looking into student leaderships and what are some things that you can get involved with other than academics. We know that um, it is really important for us to apply some of the things that we've learned in class or maybe even like practice leadership skills beyond classes. So student leadership and student involvement is really important. And as well as non-discrimination policies, uh, every university should have a non-discrimination policies to look into. If uh, they don't, um, I would recommend asking um, the staffs and the universities, what is it, right? Um, and how do they also practice that in uh, on campus? So thinking about what centers are available, what departments are available is also really cool, not just academics, but also in um, student uh, support resources as well. There's also additional conversations about event programmings. So at uh, UT Austin, uh, um, we have a tour that focuses mainly on um, inviting LGBTQIA prospective students, um, as well as their family, if they are going to bring in their family, to ask questions about what our resources are, um, what are some student organizations, um, what are some yearly events? Um, so that event is called Longhorn Pride. And so that is one way for you to come onto campus, get to know the space, as well as enjoy um, some of uh, the company as well as make friends. Of course, this year with um, COVID, it's a little bit different, but we still are gonna find ways to engage with folks about um, how to answer questions and also how to create community for yourself. And then the last thing is what are those representations looks like and how are they fostering those representation? So uh, again, at UT and at the GSC, the Gender and Sexuality Center, we have a link of resources um, to um, anybody who's on campus or who's not on campus to learn more about what are some resources that they can get access to. If you are not a part of UT, that's totally fine. Um, we can totally support you in finding and connecting you with uh, scholarships and whatnot that may not necessarily pertain to UT students, but we can try to help support you uh, in other local or national scholarships. Um, here at UT, we have these wonderful resources right here that are for our folks who are part of UT, and these are wonderful scholarships that we um, connect our, a lot of our students with. Um, so yeah, and so one of the things I want to make sure that you think about are what are types of communities are you hoping to build and also be a part of, right? For some of us, uh, we may be interested in creating some of those opportunities, right? And then for others, it might be more of like, I want to be part of something, right? So think about like, is there a, um, those resources and events or programming for you? And if not, how do you want to create them, right? There's so many different ways. So it's always important for us to ask these questions. But also thinking about uh, your intersectional identities, right? Um, so one of the things that I uh, recognized when I was an undergrad was that I wanted to find a space that was, um, was talking about my queer identity and acknowledging my queer identity, but also my Asian identity as well, or at least my um, racial identity, right? So I wanted to find that space and finding a student organization as well as um, student events and programming um, with that kind of uh, able to talk to my identities while also helping me explore those identities was really important. And if you're not uh, familiar with uh, Dr. Kimberly Crenshaw's theory of intersectionality, sorry, I'm getting a little academic -y, uh, but intersectionality is the idea that multiple identities intersect to create a whole that is different from the predominant identities. 
So meaning that when we're talking about your identities, we're not just talking about race, but we're also talking about gender and we're also talking about class and every, every other identities, right? Um, and also recognizing that all your identities create you, you as a whole. And um, it's really important for us to be able to find those spaces that makes us feel and also encourage us to learn about all these intersections. Another thing to think about is resources as well, okay? So I'm just focusing mainly on Austin uh, just because of this is just where my areas of expertise is at, uh, even though I'm originally from Chicago. So, so uh, if you hear my Chicago accent, sorry, uh, it's just a thing. Anyway, uh, so another thing to also keep in mind is that if you're not able to get connected on campus, that's totally fine. Um, maybe you just don't have time, or maybe uh, you are have other factors that's um, making you unable to get involved on campus. That's totally fine. Think about internships or volunteering opportunities. Those are another way for you to grow your community as well, uh, as, well as um, create a social network for you. Um, like I said, I am uh, originally from Chicago, but I moved to Texas uh, about four years ago during my grad program. And so during my grad program, I wasn't able to get to know a lot of my on-campus work or on-campus community. And so I sometimes I went off campus. That way I can get some uh, uh, off-site campus type of experience. So one of the things that I wanted to kind of highlight and how you can connect it in so many different ways, uh, think about local organizations. Nonprofit organizations is a great way to get connected and how folks are supporting LGBTQIA folks in different ways, right? ELGO is a nonprofit organization that focuses on LGBTQIA and POC folks, um, as well as connecting local communities with uh, other local community resources. Um, so they might have, uh, might have, they have a wellness resources. They have um, sessions that talk about different spectrum array of LGBTQ identities, as well as talking about mental health. Um, another organization that I would love to highlight is Waterloo Counseling. So they fo focus on providing uh, counseling for our folks, uh, young adults. Um, and so on and so forth, right? And so these are a number of ways that you can get volunteer and intern. Um, another thing is also our online community groups, right? Um, so we have Austin Queer Asian, Black Pride, Chronically Queer, Latinx Pride. There are also ways that you can uh, connect with them via social media. So if you are a fan of Facebook, Twitter, um, Tumblr, Instagram, I'm not a Tumblr person, Sorry for folks who love Tumblr, but just know that there are a number of ways on uh, socially that you can get uh, connected with, right? And then there's national organizations that you can also get connected with there, as well as local community events. So these are some awesome local community events that I wanted to plug in and shamelessly plug. They're amazing. Um, all of these uh, folks on here are amazing and I want to make sure I highlight and give some space for them. Um, if you want to learn more about their work, you can totally check out their website. Um, I know that my uh, shameless plug right now doesn't give the full um, array of how amazing they are as an organization, as a group as well. And so I just want to make sure that like you get a chance to check out their uh, resources, get to know some of their staff, um, and uh, also get involved as well. All right, so other possibilities to think about is um, you can also explore the world, right? Um, given in mind that um, when it's uh, safe and accessible to do so, you can always think about traveling abroad. Uh, and so one of the things that um, I was had the opportunity to do is create and also um, uh, collect some resources to study abroad. And I know for some of us, it might be impossible depending on the resources that are available, right? Um, but I wanna make sure that you know that it is a possibility. Uh, again, as a first generation college student, I didn't know that traveling abroad was a possibility. Um, I was able to travel abroad during co my college time, but again, you can also travel abroad after as well. Um, so again, this is a build your own experience. Um, everyone's experience is gonna be different. So just know that um, 
you, if you have that ability to do so and have the resources to do so, um, go out and take uh, that time to travel, right? Um, and uh, here are some things that uh, from our students as well as some other folks who share their advice about researching travel guides and internet resources. What are some uh, current conversations about uh, LGBTQ experience traveling in certain spaces? Read about local news, e-magazines, and online resources, as well as um, think about um, what are some resources that are out there. So one of the things that, again, I want to show and shamelessly plug, um, you're probably like, oh my god, Gwenhyun is focusing oh, so much on UT. Uh, yeah, well, you can totally um, access this information too. So don't worry about it. If you're like, I'm not part of UT, how can I get access to it? Do I need to? Don't worry. All you got to do is go on the GSC main website page. You can type in GSC and UT Austin into the Google search. Go under resources here and you can access it. Don't, no need to worry about logins or anything. This is really accessible to everybody, right? Um, there are some resources, depending on what you're looking at, um, translate in uh, other languages, such as Spanish. Um, so just an FYI. Um, but anyway, if you're focusing on studying abroad, right? We have this wonderful link right here and you will have all these wonderful links. So no worries about having to like search for all of them and asking yourself, is, is this all it? Um, there's this wonderful list right here. So focusing on travel resources, trans travel resources, uh, region specific resources, um, and then also travel blogs, mental health resources, and scholarships resources. Yes, I just said scholarships, right? Uh, so just know that, um, again, this is for y'all to use if you need to, okay? All right. So the next thing I want to make sure that you know a little bit about uh, is what about welcoming professional spaces? So I already know that there's already a session or a, um, uh, a session that focuses on inclusive LGBTQI uh, professional resources, right? Or at least looking into workspaces. But I wanna just add a little shameless plug in this space. Um, just wanna also wanna check on chats. Oh, yay, thank you. Thank you so much for adding that. Um, okay, so displaying um, any LGBTQI friendly decorations, right? Um, if you were in my workspace, there's a ton of flags, um, there's an ally pledge, there's tons of quotes, and there's tons of um, LGBTQI leaders in our office space. Of course, um, you're only seeing this wonderful TARDIS, right, because I'm a Doctor Who fan, uh, so unfortunately it's not my physical space. I just know that, like, something very similar can be like that. Um, so something that might look like this, right? Sorry, um, something that might look like this, right? Or anything else other than that. Um, so there's so, so many different ways that you can find um, clues that if the space is LGBT friendly. Um, let me think what else is there. Um, using gender inclusive language, right? Um, providing intersectional resources and uh, all forms of positive um, representation, um, support of your self-expression, your uh, activities? Um, are they uh, having uh, conversations about LGBTQ identities and continuing learning more about those identities? Uh, discussing about state and federal legislations and how are they connecting with local and national organizations, uh, connecting you with uh, resources and tools and skills, and uh, also family support as well. Um, also being able to be respectful of your intersectional identities as well. All right, um, and another thing to keep in mind, um, this is relatively short, just because I want to make sure that you are uh, still have any questions, comments, queries, getting queries, just because, no, okay, sorry, I'm from Chicago, my jokes are really dry. Um, so if you ever want to connect with us, uh, even after uh, this video is over, um, just know that here are our information, right? We are available on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, our website as well. And these are usually our business hours. We are happy to connect with you. Um, again, you can give us a call or again, email us and we're happy to send you any additional resources um, that are on our website. And if you are also like, 
but huh, we want to uh, show you this resources and we were hoping that you can add this to some of your wonderful handouts or wonderful website or your Facebook and Instagram. Uh, can we get promoted through your stuff? Happy to. Uh, we are happy to support all of our folks in many different ways. Um, so yeah, um, if there's no other questions, comments, or queries, um, yeah, just let me you know. Um, again, my email is here and whatnot. And um, also, we have a question from our audience. Do you, you have any recommendations for queer folks navigating college searches with unsupportive students? Yes, um, so that depends, right? Um, on what are some of your situations. Um, and so one of the things that I recommend for our queer folks navigating the college searches is to, again, reach out to staff and faculty who you know who are LGBTQ friendly. If you can't find them, I would ask the uh, um, folks are, who are doing tours or orientation and ask them, hey, where can you possibly uh, direct me to a queer friendly folk who could possibly um, tell me a little bit more about Canvas and how this is queer friendly. It's whether through email or through um, social media, whichever way that you would like to use. If you are visiting on campus, um, one of the things that oh, we've had students done in the past is talk to one of the tour uh, guides um, in private, obviously, and say, hey, can you add this to your tour or whatnot, um, or in ahead of time, and could you direct us to some of these spaces? Um, other things is, again, using the Campus Pride Index, right? Um, Sorry, I, I did, just did that little noise. I, I make a lot of noise whenever I talk. Um, using this website, uh, if you are uh, unable to, I mean, unable to visit on campus and uh, search them out, right? So, Ooh. Um, sorry, I'm very animated. I'm very animated uh, uh, person. Anyway, um, and then you could search off an institution. Right, and then um, usually it will pop up. Sorry, uh, at Austin. I swear we're on there. Um, and it will pop up um, information about the institution. Now, it depends on what you're looking for, right? Um, and what you're hoping to get connected with, um, as well as who you want uh, to hear from experiences. Um, so again, if you want to hear more student experience, I would check out um, social media. And so with the GSC, we have a um, private yet public yet you can still search it but unless you're in the group right um you won't be able to see it and you won't be able to see who's in it it's called gsc squid cat no sorry giant squid cat and um if you join it you get to meet other people who are part of the lgbt community who can also talk about what classes you can uh should uh would be interested in going to who are the queer friendly professors um who are some queer friendly staff, rooming situations, and so on and so forth. Um, other things is also asking alums who have, that might be queer friendly, and being able to talk about their experiences. Um, so at UT we have um, the alumni network for our period uh, pride folks, um, uh, LGBTQI folks who are, who can talk about their experiences. Um, I hope that answered the question that we got. Uh, if not, you can ask a follow-up question. I'm happy to answer that. Or if our, any of our um, wonderful staff would like to ask any questions, happy to answer that. Uh, sorry, I'm generally awkward when it comes to like being recorded and I don't see faces. I was muted. <laughs> Thank you so much. We really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us about um, all the different options that students have after they graduate 
um, yeah, I think your ideas about how students with like LGBTQ students with unsupportive parents can um, be looking for like queer friendly education. I think you're spot on. I think, um, yeah, reaching out to individual staff and faculty. Um, my one suggestion would be if your parents um, monitor your computer usage or your phone searches to do to look those things up on um, either like a friend's phone or a friend's computer or to just go to a public library. Um, public libraries are an amazing resource for so many different things, but also just having internet um, when there's not a pandemic um, and the ability to like look things up in a safe way and librarians are an amazing source of information as well. So you can definitely like talk to your local librarian and be like, hey, so queer things and they can point you in the right direction for what you're interested in. Um, oh, I had a question. I talked myself out of it. <laughs> um, So uh, you said that the Campus Pride Index does include trade schools, is that right? Mm -hmm. Can you pull up a trade school for us? Um, I'm really interested to see like, like say I wanted to like become a welder, um, like how I would find like a queer friendly welding program. All right. Oh, like, wait, am I sharing the screen? Okay. Let's see. I believe it's under technical institutions, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, that's why. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, these are tech institutions. Maybe not. I know last time I was able to find it, but I could not, I'm not sure why I'm not seeing it now. Yeah, I feel like I've seen it on there too, but I don't remember how to find it. <laughs> hmm. Maybe it was some dabbling. If it's not available here, one of the things I also say is also reaching out to um, recruiters on campus of the institution that you're looking at. Um, and then also reaching out to them, what are some, some, um, what are some things that you are doing as a LGBTQI friendly institution? Um, one of the things that I also reach out to is looking uh, at uh, community groups or online community groups that are focused on certain um, expertise, right? Um, so there are tons of social media groups. Again, if you are unable to um, do this um, because your families are unsupportive, um, one of the things is just like search it up and then delete the search. Uh, but once when you are able to, um, look for specific online groups that are specific to certain trades. So even I'm in a specific trade of an online group, it's called Queer Trans POC uh, folks who work in uh, student affairs. So that's my trade and professional work. And I know that there's other institutions or other groups such as queer trans in mental health, um, queer trans who are um, mechanics. There's so many out there and they can also tell you what are some institutions, what are some recommendations and whatnot. There's a lot of things that um, a lot of people's experience have taught me, even though maybe I'm not in those uh, fields. So I'm always like, hmm, that's interesting. Yeah. So that might be another opportunity if you can't find it in here. Yeah, that's a really good call. One of the things that surprised us, um, we uh, talked with Grayson Hunt um, of the LGBTQ uh, certification program at UT uh, earlier this month for queering education. And one of the things that he was saying is that there are a lot of um, aerospace engineers getting certificates in LGBTQ studies. And so it's just a good reminder that uh, we are everywhere. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, the other thought that I had about finding queer friendly um, educational opportunities without having supportive family is I can definitely understand that might mean less financial support. Um, 
So if, you know, coming out means that your parents are going to refuse to pay for college or help with any of that kind of stuff, definitely looking into scholarship opportunities. Um, you know, the UT's resources are available for everyone. So we would definitely encourage people to look through those, take advantage of that. Um, and I would also encourage folks to look for scholarships that are totally unrelated to being queer as well. So anything that you're interested in, there's going to be a scholarship for, you know, folks who are into Dungeons and Dragons or folks who are saxophone players or folks who are mechanics. Like there are scholarships for all different kinds of things. So definitely, um, you know, exhaust your resources when looking for free money for school. Um, do everything you can to avoid taking out student loans. <laughs> I know that's the only way that so, so many people um, can attend school, but they just, the system is not set up to support people once they have student loans. So um, as many scholarships as you can do, I know it's a lot of work writing all those essays and doing all those applications, but it, the money that you can get back is so worth it. <laughs> Especially if you unfortunately don't have any family support um, financially with that. Mm -hmm. We definitely. I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say just say we uh, we encourage folks to ask other questions um, in the Q and A section. Um, yeah, but definitely continue. Oh yeah, it might be very intimidating to also apply for those scholarships. I totally get that. Um, as someone who has anxiety and depression, it it can be very intimidating. Um, so just know that if you need uh, additional assistance, you know. There are folks who are, who work at some of these institutions who are willing to give you a hand and also look for mentors, right? It's really important for us to get connected and finding people who can help support us and also be able to kind of be able to help us navigate uh, in, um, the, your next um, career or next chapter in life. Um, one of the things I also want to uh, point out too is our um campus sports pride index for folks who are athletic <laughs> not me um no for real um i prefer to read fan fiction and read comics and anime you know stuff like that and read anime oh watch anime read manga okay um so there's this campus sports pride index which focuses on um comparing folks or comparing universities um uh, with other universities in regards to are the sports 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 are friendly as well. So just know that, that those are available. There's a ton of resources and I just wanted to make sure that folks know that, you know, you can still be queer and also still be athletic. So stuff like that. Any other questions? It's true. There definitely are queer athletes. Um, and we added the link in the chat for um, LGBTQ scholarship resources as well. Um, if you go to the Central Texas GSA Coalition website, which is ctxgsa.org uh, forward slash scholarships, there's tons of different options on there for different scholarships that are available. Um, yeah, uh, unless we have other questions from the audience, I think that's everything. Um, did you have any final thoughts you want to leave us with? Yeah. Um, one of the things that I don't know if this might be helpful, um, but one of the things I want to make sure I leave with is like, um, if you're feeling as if no one sees you, if you feel alone, you know, there's a community out there for you, right? Um, again, I went to a university that was predominantly a white, cisgender, heterosexual, and as a queer person of color, it was really difficult for me to figure out where I belong. And I'm not gonna get into the nitty gritty of it, but um, it's really important for you to have compassion for yourself, right? And then one day you're gonna be mentoring others and they're gonna look up to you. I look up to everybody just because I'm five foot one, I'm really short, but um, more importantly, um, that uh, have compassion for others, right? Um, and also remember that you are amazing and wonderful and you have a great impact on this life. So I just want to make sure that my queer POC folks, uh, my queer folks from all spectrums, asexual, aromantic, agender, pansexual, panromantic, bisexuals, et cetera, non-binary folks, uh, gender queer folks, all spectrums that you are seen and that we are out there for you. 
Awesome. Thank you so much. We really, really appreciate your time. Uh, we've loved having you and appreciate your wisdom and all of your incredible resources. Um, thank you all so much for joining us here at Querying Education. We've got tons of other great content happening this week and throughout the summer of 2020, um, including uh, another session related to this on July 2nd on finding queer friendly employment. Um, that one's just about job search. And, um, and we, like I said, we have a past session on LGBTQ studies. What is it? Why would you be interested in it? Um, there's all kinds of good stuff. We're super grateful that y'all joined us and, um, yeah, thank you so much. We really appreciate it.